to Steve's Kitchen with Rick. Come and say hello. Oh, hello, Rick. Ricky, hello, Rick. Rick and I here, like a couple of Christmas elves. We're actually shaping a piece of dough at the moment. I'm teasing it into shape. Um, I've started the recipe because it's quite a long, complicated recipe and it takes you know, a number of hours to do, but we'll explain it to you, uh, the stages, and also I'll put a link down to the full recipe. This is a Nutella Christmas tree tear and share uh, loaf. It's almost like a brioche, like an enriched sweet dough. It's really delicious. Um, it's a variation of my Nutella star bread, uh, or Blumenbrot, which is on my channel. So just come down here a moment. You can see what I'm doing. I'm, I've got a piece of dough that's buttery and creamy and rich, and I'm trying to just ease it into the shape of a long, elongated triangle. And I need to match it up, I'll just show you here, with these two here that have been coated in Nutella with a little stump at the bottom like a Christmas tree stump. So we've got two layers, one coated in Nutella, a second one coated in Nutella, and this third one here I'm doing now, uh, I'm just about happy with the size. I can actually use a ruler just to sort of, just to check uh, that I've got the width about the same as the other one, which I have. Uh, it's not an exact science. But the next stage, once you've got your Nutella, hello everybody by the way, I'm sorry I haven't said hello to everyone. The next stage, and I, I will take questions while I do this, is just to take some Nutella. This is a Christmas Nutella special edition and you want to start to spread it with either a crank ha handled spatula if you haven't got one which we haven't. The back of a spoon works really well. And the Nutella has to be warm so you need to either warm it in a microwave or you have to warm it as I've done in a bowl of hot water so you just stand the Nutella jar if it's if it's glass if it's the plastic ones you're gonna to have to think a little outside the box but I want to coat this bread now uh, this dough sorry not bread it will be bread uh, in Nutella and I want to not go and don't go up to the edge don't be tempted to go right up to the edge because we're going to be trimming a salvage edge off of this i will be with you in a minute ladies and jelly spoons i will be with you in a minute i just want to get this this layer done and then one more layer and then we're going to get this proofing so in other words we've got a, an oven that's been slightly warmed up and we're going to use it to proof this bread before we bake it for you so a little bit at the bottom here just to make the the bottom of the stump or the yeah the stump would that be the word yeah. Yeah, stump's good. okay and once you've got oh what have i done yeah. <laughs> i've done it the wrong way around i should have put the nutella on after i layered it so this is going to be a little tricky i'll get michelle to help me because now what's happened is we've got extra weight which we didn't really want if you could just lift it over there michelle gently and lay it approximately don't do it that way around it's because i'm doing it live okay <laughs> I'll show you what I mean. It's gonna be harder now for me to tease the bread to line up with the previous layer. You, I should have layered this, it would have been so easy, you'll see in a minute, uh, with the next layer. I won't make the, mis the same mistake twice. Uh, oh, you won't, because you won't be putting the teller on the next layer. No, but also <laughs> I'll be showing you how, how it should go on. Yeah. So we've got that, there's our Nutella. Basically, it's an arrow pointing towards a jar of Nutella. There we go. So let's just ease that out, tease that out again, ease it out, tease it out. While you're teasing, I say Mimi says, keep it up, Steve, more live streams to come. <sighs> Beautiful. Paul says, wow, I've actually made it to one of your live streams at the time of streaming, haha. -ha. Hope you're all okay. I'm thoroughly enjoying your time with Rick. Keep them coming. Thank you very much. So the reason I say about teasing the, the dough is because when you're working with bread dough that's that's developed nicely, and we've got the last ball, we divided our Nutella up into four balls. The full recipe will be on the link down below. So if you want to check it out, when you've got developed dough like this, it literally is like a, a water droplet on a window. You, it doesn't want to straight stretch out. It wants to sort of ping back to its original shape. So a little bit of flour, a little bit of flour on the countertop. And what we're going to do, just come down here, nice and easy. Whoops, I'm a little bit low there. What we do is we sort of pad this out to a triangle, a little bit like an onigiri, 
little Japanese onigiri, and I'll turn it over so we've got a bit of flour on the back. And then what we're going to do is roll it out. Now, as I try to roll this, you'll see it doesn't want to go, all right? It doesn't want to stretch. So you have to rest it, stretch it, rest it, and keep tamping it into a, a triangle shape. Got a little bit of Nutella that side, got a little bit of Nutella that side, so. And then you roll it out to the corners, don't be tempted to go over the edge because we don't want to pinch the edge flat like that. So you stop short, just like if you're making pizza. And we just keep rolling this out. And while we're doing this, this is going to take me a moment or so. So you're just, shall I leave the camera down there while we do it? Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. It's going to take me a little while. Um, Sue so John can... says, hi, you three. Good day, Sue John. Hey, Adriana says, hey, and where is Rick? <laughs> uh, Rick is here as well, but we're going to do some wider up, up oh. screens in a minute. So I keep having to pull this point. See the point? Oh, let me try see if I can do this sideways for the camera. So I keep pulling the point out and just resting it, letting it stretch. Pull these corners out also, these two corners here. Pull it out, rest it. You don't want the dough to split. Um, stretch it out a bit more, roll it out to the three corners. So MTL Jones said, I made the style with my girls last year, so they will love doing this tree. Yeah, the tree is lots of fun. It's just, the reason I'm doing the tree is because it's, you know, it's getting near to Christmas. And although I could have done the, uh, the bloom and bread, the flower bread one, um, I just think this is more sort of festive, a little more jovial. And um, Rick's wanted to do this. So he's talk, we've talked about it several times. And I said, well, let's do the Christmas one, you know, because of the season and what have you so you can see I pull out the shape gently don't overstretch it otherwise you'll tear it just let it rest you can tell the gluten's developed really nicely in this bread um, so the way it's trying to sort of spring back like that so I'm gonna push these corners these edges out a little bit push them out Bring this one down, pull that one up again, and just pinch it to. Uh, sorry, I, sorry guys, you can't see that. But you get the gist. I'm trying to tease it out. It has to be the same size as these ones over here um, when it's finished. All right. So while I do that, come up to here. Come and say hello, Rick. Because it, it, it's we've got an oven. G'day Rick. G'day. G'day. All right. Yeah. Rick, you fancy for a drink today, because I don't really feel like alcohol today. Mm -hmm. I've been a little bit, yeah. you know, a little bit of laying off the alcohol a little bit. Mm. Do you fancy doing a, a white chocolate drink that you and I both quite like? Yes. Yeah? Exactly. Um, and um, not with the kettle though, because I need the kettle water. Okay. <laughs> so in the background, I've got my own little Alf helping me, <laughs> Alf and safety. Uh, Rick's up there doing the health and safety. And we're going to have uh, a chocolate drink. Do you fancy one, Rick? I could be tempted, yeah. Yeah, glasses here. I've got them, I've got the glass. Yeah. <laughs> you sprung that on Rick. I'm sorry, I did spring it. I would have told Rick earlier, <laughs> but I see. It just came to me. I don't really feel like a beer or, or anything too alcoholic today. Um, contrary to popular thought, I don't drink a great deal, so I don't want to drink every single day because the problem is Christmas is coming, right? It's not just the time, the season to be merry, but it's also the season to put on a fair bit of weight. And I'm trying uh, to moderate my beer intake. This is a bit hot. To be frank. You're, you're going to get Nutella all over that hat if you keep doing that. I'll oh. wear it. <laughs> right. Get the old hair. All right, that'll do. There you go. <laughs> Excuse me, wash my hands. <laughs> all right, so let's get this stretched out. So Sue John says sign. beard is gone. Yes, that looks, looks better. Look 10 years younger. Oh, 10 years younger. That's what Rick he'll said. When I got up this morning, Rick said to me, he said, Where's Steve? Where's Steve gone? He said, who's that uh, dashing young 22-year-old What has replaced him? Was that what you said, Rick? Oh, no, he didn't. He said, 
What did you actually say, Rick? I didn't you, say anything. You didn't, didn't notice, notice. You didn't notice it. For about four hours. For about four hours. And I said, Rick, are you going to say anything? I've, I've shaved the beard off. <laughs> oh, have you? You said. <laughs> yes. And I know some of you liked the beard, but to me, I, I actually put some, some beard oil into it to try and make it feel a little softer, a little bit sort of more... I don't know, less itchy and irritating. And all it did to me was maybe feel like I dipped my chin in the chip pan. So with that done, I said, no, enough's enough. I'm clearly not meant to have that much facial hair. So it's gone. It's too much work. Too much work. Stretch that out. The gentle rest. ASMR cookies. I love your Nutella bread recipes. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Just teasing the bread. Teasing the bread out. Come back down here. You can see the final little stages. I'm just teasing it out. And what I should have done earlier on, not put the chocolate on it, but this time we're not putting chocolate on it on anyway, is I should have lifted this like this and just laid it at the top, the little pointy end, and just bring it down. And as you bring it down, just stretch it out to completely cover the layer below. And that is perfect. So there we've got it. There is our rough cut tree shape. Now I say rough cut because it doesn't have to be perfect at this moment. We've got Nutella in the middle there. I'm just gonna ease it out a little bit, stretch it out just a tiny bit more. And what I'm going to do next, I'll probably try and turn this round so you can see it. So, so forgive me if I'm doing this upside down and it's a complete mess. I'm giving myself a let out if things go wrong. Um, Mr. Mark UK says hello and Sue John says what dough is it? Uh, Sue, it's all on my site. It's actually similar to a brioche dough. Um, it's an, an enriched dough. So basically it's got butter and it's got milk in it. So it's a tricky dough to work with as far as, um, as far as um, uh, rising and proofing is concerned. So let me just, let me just think about this. We're going to go roughly in the middle. So I'm going to pop that there. I'm going to go 15 in the center. And I'm going to cut about, probably about inch and a half either side of the center mark. He's making his stump. This is the bottom of the base of the tree, yes? So 44684 says, poor Rick's waistline after eating this, I mean, because I eat it all. It, exactly. <laughs> Rick and I are thinking about this. We'll yeah. be maybe talking about that in upcoming videos. Um, okay. Thank you, me dear. Beautiful. So the offcuts I'm going to put to the side. We can actually bake these just as they are. They'd be make nice little... Uh, Little samplers, little chef samplers. So I'm just going to cut Sal, this. Sal Pat said, oh no, I missed a lot. No, you've not missed a lot. You've it's not missed anything ready. at all. <laughs> so that's the bottom of my tree cut out. Can you see that? The next thing I'm going to do is take a, a butter knife, a blunt knife or some sort of implement. And I am just going to, well, we should probably cut the sides off first. So what I'll do next then I haven't got a metal ruler. Normally I would use a metal ruler for this. We're just going to trim up these edges. And I've got a knife uh, similar to my chef knife, uh, sort of probably about an eight inch knife. And I'm just trimming along that edge to get a nice sharp edge. Now that is a salvage edge and I probably will discard that or I might cut it up. Make it to a yeah, I might make it into something nuts. Gordon and says, hi delicious. guys, just come in. Good day, Gordon. Hey, Gordon. Um, and I'm just going to cut this one up as well. I'm doing this by eye. Normally, if I was doing this for a special presentation, I'd probably measure it all off and get it absolutely perfect. But we're, we're good. This is good enough. So, there you can see we've got our Christmas tree. Is that visible? Can you see that yeah. clearly enough? Yeah. Okay, the next thing I want to do is take a, a ruler and a butter knife and just going from the bottom of the tree stump here, I'm just going to mark a line. It's not actually, I'm not cutting it. I'm just going to mark a line down to there. So you can see a little ridge there. Other side as well, same sort of thing. Mark a line down to the stump. The reason I'm doing that is because the next stage of my 
uh, Nutella bread is to take about uh, maybe three quarters of an inch to an inch and cut on this side and then on this side but only going up to the to the marked line that I spoke about a moment ago. Jo says hello Steve, Michelle and Rick. Good day Jo. So see that there? I've cut all the way through all the layers of dough and I'm going to come across now and do one, two, three. It's just evenly all the way up isn't it? Yes, yeah, evenly all the way up and I'll match it up on the other side. Now I think because my Nutella was a little bit thicker than normally, I think my Nutella is a little bit uh, thicker than I would have liked it, but, but that'll be fine. Let's cut right the way up to there. We can't go any higher than about there. Then I'm going to turn this round and I'm going to try and match that up on the opposite side. So cutting that across to there, follow the line across, cut it across to there, follow the line across, cut it across to there. So basically uh, two perfectly matching lines all the way up the tree. Gordon says it looks good. It's going to taste good, Gordon. This mm -hmm. is going to be an absolute delight. I wish you all could be here to have a little try of this. It's a lot of fun. You've got basically a rich sort of brioche uh, dough. Okay, see that? Is that nice and clear? Yeah. Yeah, so you can see. Right. The next thing I want to do is take these, these pieces and I'm just going to give them a double twist and lay them back down. So you see that? So the next one, yeah, you can come in a bit, Michelle. Double twist, one, two. Don't, don't be tempted to do more than two because as you go up, you're going to actually have to reduce that down. So I'm twisting it towards me, one, two, and I'm laying that down. Next one, one, two, laying it down. On my video on YouTube, I actually speed this up. So uh, one, two, I can probably just about get away with two on that one. This next one, one, Two, the next one I think we're going to go with just one twist. Uh, one, oh no, I can probably go a, a second twist. <laughs> Got to keep it even. One, two, and we're down. Stop for a little bit of uh, white chocolate. Yeah, ASMR cooking says, I really think you should make a recipe for white hot chocolate powder for Christmas. Oh, I yum, think yum. you'll be one of the only channels to make white hot chocolate. I think we can go, all right. <laughs> That's a, your problem is with a proper white hot chocolate powder, as you say, you would have to have some sort of um, air dryer to, to take the real chocolate. Yeah. Well, it would have to be like a vacuum air dryer, yeah. I think. Uh, I've got a little bit messy, so I'm just going to go back here. <laughs> yeah, I think you went a bit thick with your, with your Nutella. A little bit. Because yeah, it was a bit... Nothing, nothing wrong with a little bit extra and Nutella. See, the Nutella's in a, in a festive jumper. Can you see that? Let's pop it there, it can be. So now, <laughs> definitely, we're just going to go with one twist here. So pick it up, twist towards me, one twist, twist, pick it up, twist again. So we get that nice sort of little lamination of, of chocolate and brioche bread. Uh, this last two, if I can just get a twist on them, which I probably can. Sue says it's starting to look yummy. It's going to be absolutely yummy. This one's just a little bit tight, maybe just <laughs> half a twist. Joe Wheeler says that looks great. Oh, a little half a twist there. There you go. Okay. Will you, <laughs> will you look at that? Everybody's so, going to be coming in the teller. Uh, how can I, how can I, can I turn the camera maybe? Mr. Uh, Mark's UK said I wish I could try that. Look at that. Not so there yet, you go. when it's cooked. There you go. <laughs> Chocolate Nutella. Now, what we need to do... It's puffing already, so that's good. Is we need to get this proofing. So... Um, just come down to me a moment. I've got to get this onto a board. So what I'm going to do is just slide it onto the back of a baking tray without hopefully dropping it. If you've got one of those big flat cookie trays, they're really good for this sort of stuff. So we've got it onto the back of a baking tray. We need to proof this. We need to proof this. If you've got a proofing oven, great. If you haven't, Warm your oven very gently, just to about 23, 24 degrees Celsius. I think that's 74 Fahrenheit. Maybe someone can check that for me. Gordon says, is the oven on, Rick? Um, Not yet, Gordon. <laughs> we're going to put some hot water in the bottom of the, uh, in the oven, so, so some steamed water. Is that already on? Yeah. So I've got a kettle, hot water, because I don't want the, the brioche bread to dry out. So 
Pop that in to the bottom of the oven. Has that been boiled? Yes. Okay, so we've got lots of steam going on in there. And then I'm going to take the bread and pop it in the oven for about, ooh. We'll do 20 to 30 minutes, yeah, so we'll do 20 good, minutes to start with. Good 20 minutes or so while we have a chat with you. Yeah. <laughs> Sally says hi. Good day, Sally. And ASMR cooking says your eggless churro recipe was my favorite to make during lockdown when you could hardly find anything. Cool, churros, eggless churros are the tr traditional way they used to make them in Spain, I think, um, if I remember rightly. Um, if you, or is it in Mexico? I'm, I'm a couple. I, I think it was the original Spanish, Spanish or Portuguese way of making them. And then at a later date, uh, when they sort of got um, nationalised or Americanized, I suppose, they started making them with, with um, egg. If you make them eggless, they're a little lighter, a little fluffier. So it's quite nice, worth, well worth experimenting with. Angela says yummy. Hi, Angela. G'day, um, Angela. Uh, DJ Me says the bin has gone, Steve. It has. It has. Quick clean up because um, I'm a tidy, Totten tidy person. Sorry, Tottenham Tilly D says hi all. Oh, Merry Christmas. Come on, Rick, come and get in. Let's get some. Should we get some uh, <laughs> Bell chairs? Oh, yes. Okay. Let's have a little yeah. sit down. Yes. Another perch. Oh. Uh, we'll do that. Yeah, we've got yep. stuff on. <laughs> right. we'll be, any questions, Michelle, that I've missed while I was doing that? Um, I think we're okay. The reason why you were, you were getting on so quickly is because you needed to prove this, didn't you? In yeah. the oven and and uh, then you've got to cook it, so it would be a very long live stream otherwise. Yeah, we were thinking, uh, you know, before, I wanted to do this on a live stream, but realistically, just the prepping of that, we started at... One o'clock or twelve o'clock? Twelve, just twelve. It's, it's about five o'clock now, and we started prepping because you have to make the dough, you have to knead the dough, and you have to let it completely rise. Our dough was in a pot, uh, in a bowl like this, and it literally was pushing the the the, the tea towel off the top. Um, also, if you want to check out some behind the scenes of making this. Rick's going to be doing a video, hopefully, maybe in the next few days. Possibly, Rick? yeah, yeah. Just yeah. grab if, a few bits of video. If it, if it comes out all right, Rick. Yeah. So Paul Titmus says, what was the drink? Did I hear you say it was a white hot chocolate? I've never tried that. It's a white hot chocolate. It's, a, it's, a, it's just a, um, options. Options. So it's a British um, a white hot chocolate. There's a little story, well, a little story behind it. All right. Okay. Um, I was having trouble because it kept separating. And, uh, I didn't realise at the time, but the water was too hot, so it wasn't mixing in properly. So I always thought this was Cadbury's options. So I actually got onto the Cadbury's Facebook page and said, you know, how do I do this? So I've never got an answer. And then I looked on the back and it's not Cadbury's at all. No. I think it's Nestle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a little embarrassing. How dare they not reply? Right. <laughs> so we're going to sit here for a little while now, answer some of your questions, have a little chin, chin wag. Um, if you're making this, you do need to have uh, strong white flour or bread flour. You could just about get with all purpose or plain flour, but to be honest, uh, it won't develop as well. So I've said to people before, they're always asking me, can I do it with plain flour? You can, but it really won't come up out as well because you, there's a lot less gluten uh, proteins inside uh, all purpose flour. It just doesn't bind together, particularly when you're doing an enriched flour which has fats added into it, such as this one which has got butter and milk in there and sugar. Um, yeah, you're really, you're, you, you need as much gluten to get a lovely elastic dough as possible. So if you start with a wheat flour like a, a bread flour or a cake flour, you're really going to be sort of batting for the wrong side. You're, you're up against it before you start. Mm -hmm. So Tottenham Tilly D says Rick Van Man the legend. The legend that lives. Almost. Well, well. Uh, NTL Jones says, how long can this be left with Nutella in before cooking? Um, not long. You, you need to, once it's proofed, you need to, or proved, proofed, proofed, um, you need to bake it because it will overproof and then it will just collapse and you can't cook it at all. You just end up with a, a sort of biscuit. Um, uh, the one I actually made on my channel uh, several years ago, when, I, when it was Christmas time, when we were still living in Australia, wasn't it? it? Was. We were full time. I, can actually um, put that down. I actually overcooked it because I think I remember at the time we were doing something out in the garden and we were we we, we sort of forgot about it in the oven and slightly almost it flirted with being burnt, but it wasn't burnt. 
Um, so now you do have to keep an eye on it. What's the bake time for this, Michelle? About 15 to 20 15 minutes. 15 to 20 minutes. It doesn't so take very long because it's not that big, what, is it? What temperature? Uh, two eight, uh, 180 degrees Celsius, 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's about, you just keep an eye on it really, about sort of 10 to 15 minutes, look at it. it, it, it if, if this proves well in the oven, in Rick's oven, which I hope it will, um, it should be quite puffed up before we even bake it, so it'll almost sort of pre-aerated. And then when we, we cook it, we're really just letting the dough cook through altogether. It doesn't take long. So, um, Joe says Rick looks like a snooker player today. Uh, <laughs> yeah, super loopy, nuts are we, da, da, da. what's that song? So we're all snooker, loopy, is that the one? It's not familiar with that one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Gordon says no alcohol tonight. No alcohol tonight, no. Gordon. No, no. It's a very sombre night uh, today. We, we've had. Uh, uh, no, we haven't had anything. <laughs> Chaz, Chaz and Dave, Joe says. Yeah. That was the uh, song, wasn't it? Yes, we're all snooker, yeah. Loopy. Yeah. Did, um, did, did, Sue John did. says we'll be on MasterChef next. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making notes. He's making notes. He's got a lovely little up for auction at some point. This <laughs> Rick's little recipe book that I'm teaching him all the, the things. This tear and share Nutella bread has actually taken up two pages so far. Oh. With diagrams. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> diagrams. Just don't look at my scrappy writing. Yes. Everybody the teacher says Rick should have tidier handwriting. <laughs> but it makes sense to him. What we're going to be doing also, because we're all starting to realise that as, as the run-up to Christmas comes, Rick, we're all eating a bit too much, aren't we? Yes, we are. A little bit too much delicious you food. You mentioned that in the last video, actually. Yeah, we, we, we've started to already overindulge somewhat. So what we're going to do, shall I mention about what we're yeah, going to do? Yeah. We're going to actually um, start to develop some recipes, and we're going to have... A, well, I'm going to develop some recipes, but I'm going to kind of err them towards things that we all like, so, so I'll take some advice from Rick. Um, so that's tin fish and rice. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and we're going to go to uh, an alter, alternate day fasting sort of thing. It's not a, it's not a diet, but we're going to we're going to take three days a week. We're going to really reduce down the amount we eat so that we can overcompensate on the next day. And I'll go into more details about it. Um, some of you may be familiar with Michael Mosey's Dr. Michael Mosey. I've got the name right. Um, uh, theory about alternate day fasting and I think I'm, I've already some, quite some months ago started mm -hmm. developing some really co kind of no uh, cool. is she at it again? She keeps having a little not yeah. completing, I don't know what she's no, doing she's, oh, is that she who should not be named? Yes, yeah, she yeah. who should not be named, which yeah. seems to join us on you, every live stream. You can mute it the, I have. the button nearest you is mute. I've done it yeah. okay. I've done it. So Junaid says hi folks. Junaid, oh. how are you mate? And Amy says, hi Steve, Michelle and Rick. Haven't heard from Junaid for a long time. Yeah, that's right. DJ Me says, would Steve, would you ever use a turkey crown for Chris, instead of a full bird on Christmas Day? If I was only... Oh, no. <laughs> no, to be... Yes, I would. If it was just two of us. But there are so many much better birds to use at Christmas. And turkey crown, it's a very... It's a fairly modern... Um, innovation in the supermarkets isn't it it's just a way of uh, getting that just the turkey breast and and and, and that's they sometimes sort of chuck a load of butter in it or, or what have you or some herbs and things but you know to me the turkey breast is the least flavorsome it's the possibly the least flavorsome piece of meat created on the it's next to corn it's got almost no flavor at all so uh, i'm not a big fan um uh, I, I'd rather, this year we're going to, for example, I'm going to be cooking Rick a, uh, a goose and uh, we're going to be having some ham, Christmas ham. <laughs> <laughs> well, I might even unplug her. That's no, it. No, no, I've had this this on. She's on. She's muted. Yeah, um, Gordon says turkey crown stuffed with butter under the skin keeps it moist. Yeah, it, that doesn't really, Gordon. But you know, if you, if you say so, it, it really doesn't because you to to make a turkey really moist, you have to you have to be very careful. You don't overcook it, and then you can get lots of moisture in a turkey. You cook it a little bit too long, all the water sort of squeezes out of the bird and you end up with dry. So as much butter as you put underneath. And that, that's where the old idea of a butter-based turkey, you know, burn a 
Matthew's butter base. And I used to, years ago when I did the turkey, I used to sort of peel back the, you know, get your hand under the skin and completely smother it in butter, almost like a whole block of butter inside there with herbs and everything. And it still came out as the, the driest piece of meat. It's not the best Christmas. Well, Sue says but turkey is disappointing. But yeah, every year we all wait, we all expect turkey. It's barely been around sort of about 80 years as a, as a culinary sort of Christmas uh, bird. It's become sort of the, the popular bird. In, the, in Europe, in Britain, for example, in the UK, turkey wasn't even here, uh, I think, sort of uh, about 80 to 100 years ago. Everyone would have had uh, goose and pheasant, <coughs> cockerel, and anything but turkey. It's, it's, the, it's the blandest of birds. Now, I think I talked about this in the last stream. If you actually keep your own turkeys, which Michelle and I did for Christmases but when we lived in, in um, France, and they were really big turkey. I mean, they were huge turkeys. You can actually add flavor to them by gaming them up, and that means killing the bird and hanging it for at least two weeks, entrailed in, in your barn, as we used to do, and letting the flavors develop. But you're not gonna get that from a butcher's or a, or a supermarket. It's killed and in the, in the, straight into the cling wrap packet and, and to the supermarket. It's got no flavor in it at all. So that, it's my rather long-winded answer to whether I like turkey <laughs> crowns. They're all right, but there are better pieces of meat. Gordon says I am a plastic chef. <sighs> <laughs> now I'm a plastic punk. Uh, Damon says you always do these when I'm about to go to work. Have fun, guys. Damon, <laughs> work's not important, mate. You're going to miss <laughs> the unveiling of the chocolate Nutella tear and share Christmas tree. If you go to work now, just forget it. Stop working. It works for mugs. ASMR cooking says, are you from Australia or England? Both. I, I, uh, both Michelle and I consider ourselves to be Australian, through and through, true blue Aussies, uh, but we were both originally from the UK. So we're, we're British, English, Australians, but we, we are uh, from Australia and probably don't have particularly strong accents. I, I have a friend in Australia who arrived in Australia when they were 16 from Scotland they're now about uh, 48, and they still sound as if they come straight, straight off the boat from Glasgow. So you don't lose your accent, and you don't necessarily... We'll pick up um, Australian, uh, Australianisms, you know, in the Arvo, the Servo, um, words that we use on a common basis, thongs, for example, for flip-flops. Um, but we don't... We're, we'll probably never have really hard sort of ochre Australian accents. So Joe says, I expect Rick to be cooking some of these recipes on future camps now. That's the plan. That's what my little brown book's for. <laughs> Making lots of notes. All the good food that's uh, been happening these last couple of weeks. It's more than jotting them down. Isn't it? Oh, yes. <laughs> brown book. More than a raspberry. I like that. Yeah, I'm going to write that down. <laughs> Shalimar Perkin says, I have four turkeys and two bone in hams in my deep freeze. Sales and I make my own stock. Bone, bone in ham is great, mm -hmm. and, and I'm going to try and do a, a ham for, for Rick and Michelle this year. Uh, I love a ham. If you haven't made hams before, it really is just a pickled piece of pork. So you take the pork and you soak it in a brine, which is basically brine. Think of the brine you see. It's just salt water. You add in herbs and spices to it, and you soak it for five days minimum, really, to sort of let the salt water, the brine, sort of pull the moisture out of the meat and add flavour into the meat and then when that's done you've got yourself a ham. Base that over in sort of, um, yeah, if you want like a honey and, 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 and sugar sweet topping, maybe some mustard on there as well, and bake that in, in the oven and you'll have the most beautiful crumbly ham. Great thing to do. On the bone, even better. Uh, turkeys, yeah they're good but, but turkeys... See so John says beef wellington is great. We, uh, we're having a bit of beef for Christmas, aren't we, Rick? Yeah, we've got a bit on the way, uh, haven't we? A piece of um, ribeye. Uh, rib so we're going to be having a lot of meat this mm. Christmas. <laughs> yeah, we better put our loincloths on, our furry loincloths and, and clubs. I'll bump the shell over the head and drag her around the kitchen. <laughs> Trop, pop a caveman style. Sure. DJ sure. Lee says, can you do a Brussels sprout recipe, bacon, chestnuts, etc.? <laughs> uh... uh <laughs> We're not a big fan of Brussels sprouts. I, 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 love I Brussels Michelle sprouts. loves Brussels sprouts. Mm -hmm. um, I'm always working to make Brussels sprouts taste nicer. I found the best way to make Brussels sprouts, you have to improve them anyway, is to slide them off the chopping board into the bin just before <laughs> Christmas dinner. <laughs> <laughs> They're nice. Especially if you buy them on the store. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's nice like that. Yeah. 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 That's so <laughs> I actually started to like Brussels sprouts, I must admit, and I, 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 I can go, but they, they mustn't be overcooked. I think mm. the problem is when you have early experiences of overcooked Brussels sprouts mm -hmm. and they, they really they stink the whole house up and they taste just like... Yeah, they've got to be just they've they've got got to be crispy still. Yeah, yeah. They've got to be a bit crispy. They've yeah. got to be a little bit firm. Mm. Um, the Cheap Shop Photography says hi, and Nafi says hi. And um, NTL Jones says, I've lived in Liverpool for 20 years and my Welsh accent is still as strong. My sister is strong Scouse. Scouse. You don't lose your accents and you don't necessarily pick up accents, but I bet, uh, where was she living in uh, Liverpool? Liverpool. I bet you've, you've picked up some colloquial sort of <laughs> Liverpudlian terms. Um, they do do that there, don't they? You know, something maybe. Is that Liverpool? That's a bit uh, booming. I have no idea what that was. <laughs> 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 oh, Tottingham dear. Tilly D says I miss Rick's allotment videos. I said last from the past now, but over five years ago, isn't it? I think. Could you do allotment videos? <laughs> mm, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure I did one at some point. At I've some got to time. say, a big, big. While while I'm thinking of sort of. Um, Oh, I don't know what while I'm thinking of. I've got to say a big thank you to Tony O'Malley again yes. for the beautiful PayPal donation. Tony, thank, thank you. Thank you, Tony. We love you. Come around, Michelle. Say, say hello to everybody Ooh. and say thank you to Tony with us. She's a sweetheart. She she quite often sends us a little treat on Tony's on from paper. Ireland. That's what made you think. Yeah, it oh, was. <laughs> thank you, Tony. <laughs> beautiful. Um, and hi, everybody. That's what I had to do, wasn't it? Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you may go now. You're dismissed Dismiss. before I get my club and loin, get my club loin, club club. loin club. Loin club and club out. <laughs> <laughs> it's horrible image. Isn't it? no. I know it's not. <laughs> great, it's not a great. It's not a great sight. And I am going to be having a haircut very shortly as well. I'm going to go back to my sort of short hair. Got the little, uh, the little soul patch here on the, under the chin. The, mus the beard is gone. We're going back yes. to. Full, going back to Steve. <laughs> going back to full Steve. Paul Tipman says, "I love Brussels. My partner does not. I heard recently that you must not cut across in the bottom, as they then cook unevenly." Hmm. I think you. you Generally, I do cut across. It's to get the through the stalk, really. Yeah, easy, because if you don't, you don't, if you don't cut it, they, they're quite the opposite. They will probably cook on the outside way before they cook in the centre. Um, I, I actually like to undercook the Brussels sprouts by a lot. I mean, just almost blanch them and then bake them in the oven with the sort of, uh, you know, with the roast potatoes and things, and you can mm. end up. But if you do, if you, yeah, if you do them, um, if you do them. If you cook them to the normal level, like a full cook till they're sort of a little al dente, you put them in, then they just go to mush, so you really mm. just got to almost blanch them. Um, and they're nice. So Joe is obviously similar to Rick because he says, I've only just noticed the beard has gone aside from the salt patch. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Thank you, Joe. <laughs> Sorry, Joe. We talked about it yesterday. I was on Joe. If you didn't check out, I'll leave a link down to Joe's channel as well. He did the, um, a, a cool uh, uh, live stream yesterday. Uh, which we missed much of, to be honest, Joe. Yeah, it's a little bit unfair to say you did a cool live stream. We did miss much of it, but I did appear on it at the end. So I managed to do a sort of guest star appearance on Joe's channel. And uh, and you can check out Joe playing the old didgeridoo at the end there. And also the video the, the, the day before that, just check out his channel. He does some great sort of DJ sort of sessions on YouTube. So it's a bit of fun have it on in the background. Um, and there's also a, a, a Christmas record that Joe's got out, I think, on... Um, on okay, Amazon mate, Play, mm. yeah. But we'll put the link down to Joe's channel, and, and you can you can check it out. So Paul says, going back to Brussels sprouts, they love, they are lovely, sauteed with bacon the and butter. No, they're delicious, Paul. I agree with you. Mm. <laughs> they're not. They're not any of those things. Now parsnips yes. baked until they're caramelised they're nice. and, and, and mm. delicious, or even Sweden carrot. Another thing I love at Christmas time. Do you have you have Sweden carrot? Right? Not so yeah. much at Christmas. A little bit of nutmeg, a little bit of, uh, you know, know. Give, give them a try. Give them a try, yeah. yeah. If we can do them. <laughs> if, we, oh, if, if we're going to do them, yeah, I'll go for it. But. So what is your favourite vegetables, apart from Brussels sprouts, <laughs> or your Christmas dinner? What's your favourite vegetables? And I mean, how would you have them? How would you like them cooked? What, you know, comments down below. Michelle will read them out. Um, well, Shalom, my perfume said before you asked that, last year I made salmon wellington. I may do that again. Talking about salmon Wellington, we've done that a few times. It's lovely. It's a sort of a salmon on croute, isn't it? It's a, is that the correct term, Michelle? Salmon on croute? Yeah, croutes. salmon on croute. Um, yes. you, you take a, a piece of salmon and bake it in a pastry uh, with um, usually with some certain herbs and spices, if I remember that we tend to do that. It's a lovely way. Like a a salmon, in there would be nice yeah, another one is a salmon roulade, which a roulade, roulade uh, which is quite nice, which we've, we've done before. So that's been nearly. Um, 20 minutes. Do you want to just have a quick look? I'm going to have a quick look. You say they're 
<laughs> when he moved <laughs> all at once. Yeah. I'm going to let it go a little Another bit. ten? Uh, another five. Another five. It's, it's yeah. sort of... Um, okay. It's sort of... Really there? It's a little bit inflated. Yeah. It's a, it's and a you've got to heat the oven up anyway when that comes out. Mm. Um, Junaid says the best thing to do with Brussels sprouts is bacon. Is a bacon sprout bomb. Just say, otherwise they're pretty <laughs> useless. <laughs> yes. Um, oh, look, to be honest, Brussels sprouts are kind of growing on me a little bit. Um, you just Gordon knock says, them off the back there, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> Parsnip with honey, lush, mm, roasted. Yeah, mm, yeah, um, yeah. Joe says, I've got Brussels, roasted chestnuts, parsnips and carrots tonight with some roast chicken and stuffing. And we'll be round for dinner then, Joe. Tonight. That sounds lovely. <laughs> um, cheat Shop Photography said, Swede and mashed potato is nice too. Sweet and mash, okay, that would um, be good. And ASMR Cooking says, cut brussel, uh, cut sprouts in half before cooking because that's where the bitter is. Oh, I did actually say that uh, only, uh, you know, tell us what you like having for Christmas but not brussel sprouts. Yes. So if any more so, brussel sprouts <laughs> So mentioned. we've had parsnips and we've had sweet and mash. All right. Mm. <laughs> Minted mash, says Gordon. Well, don't forget your roasties. Mm. Maybe, yeah, I was going to say. Just a vegetable. Yeah. Isn't everybody roast, a big roast. fan of beautiful roast potatoes all caramelised and done in, in, um, in duck fat? Which mm. I think we do. We, we actually have duck fat yeah. ready for, for doing uh, uh, our Christmas Shalama dinner. Shalama Perkin says, sweet with butter difference. and brown sugar. Yeah, but, 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 but you don't need to add sugar into... Um, yes, yeah, so we've got goose fat to do our, our roasties. Don't, don't necessarily add sugar onto vegetables when you're cooking Shalama. Um, Mainly because you know we've got to get sugar out of our diets a little a bit, so you don't, yeah, goodness. you don't really want to be sort of unnaturally adding to to something that's so sweet anyway. But if you cook, um, if you cook, uh, can I unplug that? Just turn, turn her off, yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's really not behaving. Rick's um, digital assistant, you know, from Amazon, <laughs> and for some reason I have no idea. We do a live stream; it starts playing. Uh, um, music in the background and answering every third question, and none of us are, are asking it. We well, make a point that. of not actually she doesn't do that right. normally. Yeah. Not really. Sometimes yeah. when the telly's on, but it's like not... vying for attention. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they're so busy doing a live stream, and I want to be part of it. <laughs> yeah. Cheap shop photography says carrots in honey. Yes. Oh, that sounds yes. nice. Yes, but don't forget. Vegetables have a natural sweetness yes. to them. They have really natural sweetness. So you don't actually have to. If you caramelise them, and I don't mean adding sugar to caramelise them, if you cook them just right, they will sweeten. You can bake them in the oven and you get that caramelisation. Yeah, and once they get that darkness on them, you're going to get really natural sugars that come out of the vegetable cells. And if you mask that with too many artificial sweeteners, and I include honey a little bit in that, um, you, you, you lose the chance of tasting those real natural flavours. That's, uh, that's, that's, that's the way I roll, Rick. That's the way yeah, I roll, there, Rick. There again, honey glazed parsnips. There's definitely something to be said for them. Um, I, I, yes. Okay. <laughs> I would challenge you to take a really well roasted parsnip and a honey roasted parsnip and tell them the difference. Because the sweetness in a proper and a well roasted parsnip, it's, it's sugar sweet. It's almost as if beets are being... Actually, most people would probably tell you you put sugar on it. So... Um, but you're right, honey is a good good thing. But we're going to have a honey roast ham anyway, mm. so that's the main thing. We're going to do yeah, that. So here, Cheap Shop Photography says, Defo Rick on the parsnips. Yeah, yes. Yes. I agree with you. Yeah, I'm, I'm King, being pedantic now. King Cardo says, hello, I'm, I'm from Indonesia. Hello, oh, from we Indonesia. love Indonesia. So look, I'm taking this out now. You Ooh, can look. see it started, it started, started to put on some weight. Out. Um, wow. It's not probably puffed enough, but it's probably... Uh, enough for us to bake up. Yes, I think so. Get that oven on nice and hot. So, whilst we're there, if you would like to entertain someone. Gordon, Gordon says, are you, are you good at making Yorkshire puddings? Oh, Gordon, <laughs> I'm not good at making Yorkshire pudding. I'm the best at making Yorkshire pudding. <laughs> I was saying to... Oh, it's not on. <laughs> I was... Uh, <laughs> I was saying to Rick, though, the other day, if one thing can go wrong in a roast, and there isn't many things you can go wrong with, uh, it can be the Yorkshire puddings. So, uh, we're going to put this on to 180. Let me just check. I don't know the oven too well. 50, 60, 70, 80. We're going to preheat that. Which is 350 Fahrenheit. 350 Fahrenheit, 375, 350 Fahrenheit. 
And then we're going to, we're going to bake it off and then Rick and I and Michelle are going to indulge and uh, offer some to you if you can take so it virtually. So we're doing 15 the minutes to start with yeah, and see so how So we'll just it bring goes. it up to temperature. It'll probably take about oh, five, ten minutes to get up to temperature. <laughs> um, Shannon, my perfume says it's a Canadian thing. Sweet is so sulphur tasting. Uh, that's why we tend to do sweet and carrot because the sweet carotene or the, the carotene in the, in the, carrot really lifts the flavor and then you can put a little bit of butter in with it so basically you take swede and you 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 cook it till it's soft till it's tender you can stick a fork into it and it drops off you then keep, cook carrots the same way and you mash them you can cook them cook together, them together. Mm. <laughs> then you mash them up with a sort of potato ricer and masher mash them up add a little bit of butter in with them and then you put and them pepper. into and a little bit of pepper and you put them into a flat tray sprinkle a little fresh nutmeg on the top maybe a little extra butter pop that in the oven and re-cook it so you cook it in the oven it's it's a sweet it's just a beautiful balance so jennifer says leeks cooked in butter are lovely anytime absolutely and shalimar says fried cabbage apples and onions yeah yeah i love cabbage with apple You've gone out of the way there, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're off to one side leaving space for Rick there, and he's not there. <laughs> I was waiting for you to do something with the tree. Well, it's going to go in the oven shortly. Yeah, we're just waiting for the nice. oven to get up to temperature. Cooking bread, the oven should be at temperature before you put it in. I have a tray. Um, if you can get one for doing this sort of thing, you need like a flat cookie tray with no edges on it at all, and it's ideal because it means that you can get, uh, you know, you can put it in the oven. Uh, what All we've done, though, is just taken a regular flat baking tray, cooking tray, and turn it upside down. It, it kind of works the same, but it does mean it's just rolled over the edge a little bit. Um, right, I'm going to, before this goes in the oven, I'm going to put a glaze on it. So what we did earlier today is I, in this recipe, I've used two egg yolks, and I've kept the egg whites here in a, a little bowl. I'm going to add a little, tiny bit of milk just before I whisk them up. So a little splash of whole milk, never use skim milk or 2% milk or any of those awful things. Go for unadulterated, organic, full milk. And I'm just going to whisk that up. And we're going to use that just to, um, just to, to the, with a little brush. We're just going to brush over the surface of the bread just before it goes. Don't be too hard on it because you don't... You, kind of develop some air into the pastry and we don't want to uh, knock it back in any way. So Shalimar says my Dutch mother would call Sweden carrot mash huck spot. Huck spot. Oh. oh, we probably said that wrong. Well, it's spelled H-U-T spot. Okay, huck <laughs> spot. Hot spot. Hot, or huck spot. Huck spot. spot. <laughs> so I'm just, you know, just break, you just you just whisk that with a fork or thing until you break the um, the protein in the egg so it becomes fairly sort of smooth and then you can paint it on. I'll show you. I'll bring the camera down just before we put it in the oven. <laughs> He's whisking it up. Come on, let's back over it. Good. <laughs> if you didn't watch the other live stream the other day, it was a bit of a... Well, I was going to say balls up, but I shouldn't say balls on here. So what other word could I use? It was uh, a mess, messy start. It was a, a bit of a, a, bit of a floundering start. Yeah, floundering <laughs> start. Floundering <laughs> start. Yeah. Yeah. This one you were straight into. It. Absolutely. Yeah. Like a pro. Yeah. Just didn't want to use the word balls up because I think it's not a word you could use in <laughs> on a live stream. Yeah. yeah, you probably don't want to use that word. Yeah. What word? <laughs> I'm not going to say it. You'll, you'll, you'll blame me when they pull, I'll just pull keep, me I'll off just, the air. I'll just, put, I'll just put a, make an, uh, a meme of it and put it on the thing. And... So look, almost, it's almost... A... If you try and make it into meringue. I haven't yeah. actually made work. a meringue. It won't work because there's fat in it and you yeah. can't. It, any fat will stop a meringue from developing. Everybody knows that. <laughs> so, just bring the beautiful Nutella... Just trying to Rick, do you want to, go um, off the tray. Are you going to do a little bit of extra filming? Um, I'm just doing a bit of e-roll, but all I can, right. no, no, I can right. hold I can a brush in the camera no, no, at some time. Down. Here, there we go. There she is. She's puffing up, puffing up beautifully. A little bit like my stomach. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to take a little bit of this egg wash. Now, you could actually use full eggs. You could actually use the egg yolk as well. It wouldn't harm. Um, 
But you've already used those, so why waste? But the yolks are in the bread, so gently. Joe says that looks lovely, making me really hungry now. Gently, just brush this over with a little bit of egg white. Um, try to get an even coating, otherwise it can sometimes split the pastry. Uh, so try to get it evenly coated. Um, this will just add a nice sort of um, sheen and also it will help colour the bread as it's cooked because we're doing a fairly short cook. <laughs> Yeah, do it for 15 minutes and then maybe a bit longer, but we'll keep an eye out at this time. <laughs> we will. We won't. We're not going to this time let this uh, bad boy sort of burn in the oven. We're going to let it. Uh, going to get it out on time. We'll get some nice photographs of it. I'll rely on Rick to be my, <laughs> my, my, my photographer. Instagram man. photographs. Yes. And she's just rolling off the edge there with the trunk. Okay. Yeah. That's all right. So the, the tray isn't quite big enough, but I didn't want to go undersized with this, you know, I wanted to keep it. So I'm hoping when this bakes that these beautiful laminations here will sort of split out and um, give us a, a gorgeous, uh, puffy tear and share bread. Um, now, the one thing is you've got to preheat your oven because you want to sort of shock the dough. Um, Brenda's saying, why are you not turning it a bit sideways to fit on the baking sheet? Uh, I think it will work with it's this. It's shorter. Yeah. Oh, you mean at an angle? No. I think it will no, work because what will happen is this will drop off the edge, and this one's already quite near the edge. But I know what you're saying. Yeah. We 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 have thought this. We thunk it through. <laughs> we thunk it through. So we thunk through. Yeah. Very carefully. Okay. So that's now brushed well and truly brushed, and the next thing we're going to do is bake it. But I'm doing need that. Need that oven to get up to temperature. Yeah. Um, does this one have a light? Possibly. Maybe. It's probably getting there. So how are you all? Has everybody said hello? Has everybody hit the thumbs up for Michelle? Make sure that you've mm. hit the thumbs no, up. No, there's 92 watching and I've only got 28 thumbs up. Hit the thumbs up one so thumbs that we down, can... One thumbs down, so 29. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, whoever hit that thumbs down, I love you very much. I love you very, Anne very much. And Skilchi says Nutella. Good day, Anne. How are you? Eric Pre Premchan Jagdio says, hello, Uncle. <laughs> Good day. How are you? Um, so we've used about, for this, we've used about a cup of Nutella. We've used about a pound of, um, uh, of bread flour. So it's 450 grams, so about a pound yeah, of bread pound. flour. We've used um, not a small amount of, of butter. We used a, a, about a cup of milk. Uh, we've added a little bit of salt into there. Um, some yeast. Some yeast for Couple rising. Um, some sugar. Did we add sugar into it? We did. Yeah, a little added, bit of sugar because yes, it's did. slightly sweetened. Yep. And then we've just basically kneaded that on the countertop and I added into it possibly about an extra tablespoon, tablespoon and a half, just to, uh, you know, you're working with a fine balance and I'm using cups. I usually weigh things out, but. Uh, I'm using cups, so you're working with a fine balance. So I added in about a, a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half, and you get used to it. It is better to do these things by hand, by the way. You get a real sense of feeling how the bread dough should be. You can do it with a dough hook. You can do it in a bread machine. It's too easy to do by hand. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to see me doing it by hand, check out Rick's video a little bit later on. Uh, in the next two or three days, he'll be doing a behind the scenes compilation of today. You'll be able to see that. If you want to see a step-by-step -step guide, the link is below this video, I think, probably already, or, or, yeah, or I've soon already put will it be. The, it's already there, um, and i So you can see the, 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 whole, uh, the whole process. Look, this is puffing up even more as we're talking, we're waiting mm -hmm. for... Um, so Brittany says hello from Maine. Good day, Brittany. Um, everyone's thumbs up. Thank you, guys. We're up to 40 now. Keep hitting the thumbs up. Gordon says, sat with my log burner on, watching you on my laptop, nice and cosy. Beautiful, Gordon. Alison said, I missed the beginning, so I don't know how to make the bread. I'll have to watch the recording later. It looks great. It's, we haven't done it from the very beginning today because it's a, <laughs> it's a long process of about sort of five hours. We can't do that in the live stream, so we've partially prepared this one before. But because I've got the full recipe um, on my channel, and actually, if you want, you can go across to steveskitchen.com. And actually, if you just Google Steve's Nutella Christmas bread, you'll probably It'll go straight up. there. It will. Um, and you'll actually get a, a written recipe, and you'll be able to watch the video which is embedded on my website, uh, so you can kind of you know, just refer to the written recipe. And pretty much for all my, my recipes, you can actually go across to steveskitchen.com and check out the uh, written recipe. Not all of them, but most of them. 
So Anne says, is it a sticky dough or fairly easy to do by hand? Pretty sticky. And what it is, and I was saying to Rick before, when you start doing it, you'll think, God, this this is almost like it's trying to knead treacle. It's it sticks to your hand quite a bit. But ten minutes, set a clock, set a timer, ten minutes, flap it out, fold it, do whatever you want, keep stretching the gluten out of it, and eventually um, it starts to uh, just come together. It's it's it's, it's as the proteins. Sticky. There are two um, there are two proteins inside. Uh, bread flour, glutenin and gliadin, they sort of hook together and start to stretch out with the moisture and things and they, they bind the thing together so it gets less and less sticky. Don't be tempted to keep adding flour to it otherwise you'll end up with a fairly dry dough and it won't stretch and it won't work properly, it'll be too t too tough. So I don't know... I think that's up to temperature. I think there's a little temperature thing come on there so we're going to pop this in the oven now okay. and we are going to bake it whoa whoops, look whoops. at that it's literally trying to fall off the end of the but that doesn't matter, doesn't matter. It, it won't be perfect it but it'll be, be perfect enough so that's going in the oven and we're going to bake that for 15 minutes this time we've got a minutes. timer so eric says hi and rashmi says hi eric's going to subscribe thank you eric thank you eric which Eric? Because it's not, not our. No, not no, Eric, Eric. Um, Precham Jagdio. Good day, Eric. I think he's a little youngster. All right. He won't appreciate that if he's not. <laughs> <laughs> There's any questions? Have I missed any? Oh, he says he's six. Good day, Eric. Welcome to the channel. So, we've got it in the oven, Rick. Cool, thanks. It's all ready in about. Uh, 15 minutes we will be tucking into this bad boy and having a piece and enjoying it and showing all the audience and we have a live stream coming up in the next oh possibly in the next week and i don't mean next week but within the next week we've got a live stream coming up where we're actually going to be making doggy treats christmas doggy treats so we don't want our pets to be forgotten at Christmas. So I'm going to show you how to make some delicious little dog biscuit treats at home that at least you know what's in them. You know exactly what's in them. So it'd be kind of fun to make. And we'll be doing that maybe in the next or the next but one live stream. Not sure when, but it's going to happen. So Brittany says, I made this bread in the shape of a star before. It's delicious. Can't go wrong with Nutella. No, you can't. Um, Gordon says, are you up for doing a late afternoon Christmas Day live? Uh, I don't know, Gordon. We'll, 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 <laughs> we'll, we'll see. see. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, um, you know, we're, we, we could be busy, but I can't commit to it. Joe uh, says, looking forward to the dog treat video. We'll make some for Rocco. Yes, mate. Mm. That's the thing. I'm thinking that you, a lot of you out there might want to make some little homemade doggy treats for Christmas. And um, I'll, I'll show you how simple it is to make them at home and I've got some little dog bone cookie cutters and things so it, it'll be a bit of fun. Um, Cheap Shop Photography says I'll make some for our little Yorkie Poo girls too. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> they must be cute. York, Yorkshire Terrier Poodles. Oh wow. Yorkie Poos. Oh, <laughs> send us a picture. Um, yes, that's Tim, as Joe says. Hi Tim. I do remember <laughs> it's Cheap Shop Photography, it is Tim, but I always forget. <laughs> So what else can we talk about while my, while my bread cooks? Anne says, yes, just... I'd probably be busy with the ho-ho-ho Christmas Day too. Yeah, I'm not sure. We, we, we're not 100% sure how busy we'll be over Christmas. We probably won't be that busy, will we? But it's going, to, it's going to be pretty busy for food cooking on Christmas <laughs> yeah, Day. Yeah, we have to be quite organised, I think. To yeah. To yeah. Stay yeah. Well, we'll be, we'll be good. We'll, we'll, we'll work it out. So Gordon um, says he'll make some for his border cross terrier he's nuts beautiful and you can take it out in your royal enfield and deliver it to some of your friends <laughs> i'm i'm trying to think of a what do you call it when you paint egg white on the top wash wash we do an egg wash paint because i've got paint on it just doesn't sound right so wash, <laughs> wash egg white egg white wash yes all right okay okay so it'd be there but it'd be in about a year's time we'd be looking so how do i wash egg white <laughs> <laughs> he's got an egg white in the sink. He's a bit, a bit of jiff. I've got no, wash, in, wash in egg white. I'm yeah, not going to understand yeah. what I mean. Anyway, so uh, yeah. Brush on an egg white. Br brush on egg white and milk. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Anybody like to make yeah, a suggestion look, that will yeah, make? Yeah. Give make, us some words here that yeah. will help with this. I've run out of space. That's it. That's my last <laughs> line available there. So you just write at the bottom. You put eat. Yeah. Eat. Eat yeah. and enjoy. 
It's, there we go. Nisha TV updated says hi. Good Ooh. day, Nisha TV. So, how long have we got, Michelle? At ten minutes. Ten, ten minutes. more minutes? Yeah. We've only had five. Oh, <laughs> it takes a long time when you're waiting. Yeah, you wanted to does. cook now. Yeah. Puffing up nicely. Is it puffing up nicely? It's decided to stay on the baking sheet and not... It, a little bit nice. running off the baking sheet, but we're not like... 99 people in. Come on, hit yeah, the thumbs up. Yeah. they got 44. Thumbs up for Nutella. Thumbs up for delicious... The bread. Uh, tear and share bread. Something to share at Christmas. And um, thumbs up for, for Rick in his beautiful Santa Claus Yeah, someone said uh, they liked your, liked your jacket. I can't remember who that was. <laughs> thumbs up for Rick Eric and I doing said. a little tap dance. <laughs> Getting out our ukuleles, doing that. <laughs> Shalomar says, I have a cat treat recipe that takes a can of tuna and catnip. Okay, that's interesting. Must have something else to put it together, otherwise that would be a bit soggy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Eric says, thumbs up to an awesome uncle. Beautiful, thank you. So where's everybody from today? Where are you all Where are you from today? From? <laughs> I'd like to know where you're from tomorrow. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Don't say that. Otherwise, I'll say balls up. Eric says Trinidad. Good day, Eric. ASMR from cooking Trinidad. says Scotland. Anyone, anyone from some? Well, Trinidad's got to be nice. What's the weather yeah, like in Trinidad? Yeah, nice. Barking Essex says Joe. Barking mad. Gordon says Earth. And Gordon, I'm not sure you are from Earth. <laughs> <laughs> Prove it. <laughs> Um, Adriana says Saint Croix. Oh, Croix. Uh, C R O O U X. Uh, yeah, C R O O U X. That's. Um, oh, is that in. I don't know. That's, <laughs> uh, no, no, it's in the um, uh, Caribbean, I think. Oh. Yeah. I think. Um, you think. So Tim says, I will show you my little Yorkie Poo girls on Joe's next live stream vlog thingy. Beautiful. Um, now the Kit Kat Cadillac. Kit Kat Cadillac says, "Odd question: Is your knife block being sideways best to keep them sharp?" Um, it's not my knife block. It's, <laughs> it's Rick. That, I do actually. I I would say yes because quite often when you put a, a knife in a block in a block that way, you you can dull it when you're pulling it in and out a little bit against you know a hardwood if you've got. You know, if, you, if it's a softwood like pine, it's probably not going to do a lot. So yes, in a way, putting it sideways is not a bad idea. Um, turn that round. You know, but, but you've got to have good knives in the first place to sort of keep them sharp. So if the knife has got, uh, if you've got like a good German knife like my Wusthof's, uh, the edge, the actual um, uh, hardened edge is quite deep and it'll keep its edge for longer. If you've got sort of fairly cheap soft knives, there is a chance they will blunt quite quickly. But yeah, I would say sideways, not a bad idea. Actually, not a bad idea at all. So Adriana says Caribbean Islands. Say, say quoi? Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, Shalimar says, yes, ground oatmeal, egg and flour, which is what she adds to her tuna and catnip. Yes, I was hoping so. <laughs> tuna and catnip, we then give it to your cat, it would just like slop. <laughs> <laughs> And I can, I can imagine almost any any uh, cat going crazy for that. What were the other ingredients? Um, oatmeal, egg and flour. Okay. Yeah. Cool. The Sue John says, oh great, my Alfie would love them. I have a multi-poo. Oh. <laughs> and can I just ask quickly, do you bake that then? If once you've added the flour, if you've added egg to it, I'm guessing that's you're using that, you're, you're baking them into a, into a, like cookie. a cookie. cookie. So that's quite nice mm. for cats. Well, we should do a cat video as well. We, we do love cats and all my, all my kids have cats. So. We do. Uh, yes. <laughs> How long have we got, Michelle? Oh, hang on. Hang on. Oh, it's puffing up. Six it's, minutes. It's puffing up like me. <laughs> it's puffing up quite uh, quite considerably. I think possibly I might need to turn it around. Is, is it a little uneven, Rick? Though? Yeah, it, it, that, that corner gets a bit hotter yeah, than everything else. Yeah, we won't, we won't beat much. ourselves up about it, but, but it might be worth um, spinning it around. So, um, Spin me right Tim round. says, are German the best knives or do we still make good ones in Sheffield? Oh, the Br British knives potentially could be good. I'm not familiar with that many on a, on a larger scale. The Sheffield still make good steel, but, but the Germans make some of the better kitchen knives and a lot of people would argue the Japanese and, and Asians also make good knives. 
a Japanese knife generally are like uh, companies like Global and the like make a brittler knife. It's a different knife. Um, I don't think they're for me that I like them for if you're doing sort of thin slicing or sushi or something like that. They're quite good. But if you're working in a proper hard kitchen, um, uh, the the, the German steel knives generally are better. Can anyone give me some names, maybe, of any British knife manufacturers that are, that make really good quality knives? Um, I probably won't change to them because I would be looking for an Aussie brand uh, if I, if I wanted to move from my Worcesters to a different brand. I'd probably uh, fly the flag and go Australian. But um, <laughs> you know, I don't know. Chef, there's no reason why Sheffield steel shouldn't be any better than uh, shouldn't be any uh, less better than uh, than the German steels, to be honest. I smell the bread cooking now. Yes. Mm. Oh, smelling good. It's smelling good. We've still got five minutes. Five minutes, but I'm just keeping an eye on that back edge. Do you need to turn it around? It's a little darker to me. I don't want to... Um... I'd give him a turn. He's probably be all right now. Yeah. yeah, it's getting a bit scorched at the back there. Oh. Okay, so I'm going to bring this out now. Give it a little turn. turn. Oh, yeah, I've turned that as well. So let's just turn it around. Whoops. I'm going to burn my... And... Good, Rick. Ah, oh, looking amazing. Yeah. So we just turn it, and I'm going to say that's going to be very much ready in the how many minutes? Four and a half. Yeah, even before four and a half minutes, that's going to be very much ready. Cool. Got a lot of beautiful colour on that bread now. It's almost looking like Nutella. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Mm. It smells so good. It smells really, really good. See, they're listening to you, Gordon. You said 94 watching and 45 is thumbs up. Come on, guys, thumbs up. There's now 104 watching. We've got 48 thumbs up. Yes, yeah, so that's... Uh, and two thumbs it? down. 52, 50, 56. Not thumbs up yet. And any of you that really don't enjoy the Christmas season, you're so miserable and humbuggy <laughs> that literally everything in life is a problem for you, hit the thumbs up. We're quite happy for you to do it. <laughs> but the rest of you, hit the thumbs up and let everybody know that we love Christmas. We love getting involved with family and friends. We love having a bit of fun. And we, even though we know Nutella is really just a load of sugar with a bit of cocoa in it, it's fun to have once in a while, isn't Occasionally. it? Hit the thumbs up. If you hit the thumbs down, by the way, because you don't like Nutella and a little bit of sugar and cocoa as it is, then you know, live a little bit. Occasionally, it's all right. Occasionally, it's not. A, you shouldn't have this very often this is a christmas one once a year the other one the bloom and brought one twice a year maximum you know that way you get to appreciate it. otherwise you know if we if we only if we had christmas pudding every weekend it wouldn't be a beautiful thing to have at christmas time would it mm -hmm. But it's a good one to get involved with, it, get the kids in helping you make it. A little bit, but I don't want to encourage kids to eat all this sugar and things No, no, like, but occasionally when they make it, it's If it's kids good. touch this, once you've baked it, if you've got a family and it's like adults and there's a lot of kids in it, if kids go to take any, slap their hands, <laughs> send them to bed, <laughs> right? And then you can eat it at night and they've gone to bed. When they get up in the morning, there's just the stump left. So, save the stump for you, dear. There you go. Yeah. And then at least you're taking care of the health of the children as well as being considerate and kind to yourselves. So Joe says, have you all finished the Van Man Baileys yet? No, we haven't finished the Van Man Baileys, uh, Joe. We haven't. Um, you may get some another, another story. Another story. <laughs> Ash's Kitchen says hi. Cheer, cheer up, uh, Joe. I know he's, he's, he actually went, he actually went, have you finished the <laughs> No, he added um, a, a lol. Yeah, He's no, he did it with a little bit of a tremor in his bottom lip, I reckon, you know. It was more sort of like... And a little tear, a little tear came to his eye as he said it. No, there's a little bit left. There's about probably a shot left. <laughs> At maybe, the four bottles? But if that, yeah. yeah. Or um, maybe you can lick the lid. Yeah. <laughs> so Tim says, I love a Christmas pudding. Right, I'm happy with this. I'm happy with that? Yeah, Okay. It's coming out, it's coming out. All right. Oh, ready to go. Look Ooh, at that, that everybody. Looks amazing. Wow. Overhead cam. Oh, it's a little bit hot. So, whoops, sorry. sorry. <laughs> need, need to bring this audience in as well, just yeah. have a little look. Okay, look at this beauty. Look at that. How Ooh, gorgeous is that? And now what I'm gonna do is get it off the tray because the tray will continue to cook it, the heat from the tray. I'm going to get off the tray quickly and let it cool down. Wow, says everybody. 
Wow, wow, wow. You're going to put a hot sugar glaze well, on Well, I am going to, but I get it off the tray first because I don't okay. want it to, um, to cook off anymore. I think that just stuck up on there, it's not. There we go. There Beautiful. We are. Cool. Pop well, that's brilliant. Here. That's awesome. Now, as Michelle just said then, and I do tend to do this, I like to glaze it with a little bit of sugar and water. You don't have to do this. So Adriana says, are you going to eat it on the live? <laughs> yes, we are. You try and stop us. <laughs> We've got to let it cool down us. just a little bit because it's that's yeah, how it's hot sugar. Be, um, <laughs> bit of a mess. So, what I'm going to do now is just take a cup, do, 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 excuse me a moment, and take a cup and a little bit of water, just, just a splash, maybe about a couple of tablespoons of water. Can you hear me over there, guys? Can you still hear me? <laughs> They possibly this was, can. This wasn't planned very well, so I'll see what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a bit of icing sugar because I haven't got white sugar. I want it still to be white. Put a, a, a tablespoon, maybe a couple of tablespoons of water in there to heat that up. Should have, actually, I could have used hot water. You could have done. Gordon says, love Rick's kitchen. Eric says, please save me a small piece, please. <laughs> yeah, I wish I could give you all a small piece. Look how beautiful that is. Yep. How gorgeous is that, everybody? As it starts to slide off the paper. No, I've got, I've got, my, fingers, <laughs> got my fingers on there. Rick, you going to get some photographs for us? I am. Get some nice uh, Instagram pictures so I can share them out later on, mate. Appreciate that. <laughs> four, four, six, eight. It could be a Christmas tree and also an Anglo-Saxon owl head. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> Actually, that's the cracking description. And so we heat the water up nice and hot. Give it a stir. A little bit of sugar. Probably should have made it up to a... So Eric's giving you a 10 out of 10. Beautiful. So what I'm going to do now... Oh, hang on. I need a portrait. <laughs> portrait. <It's laughs> going shallow depths of field. <laughs> okay, so I'm painting this here. So we've put it down, Michelle. I'm painting on a little bit of sugar and water just to give it a nice glaze. Um, and as it cools, this will stay a bit like sort of sticky buns, you know, a bit like when you do those sticky buns you used to have when you were kids, or maybe you had one yesterday, I don't know. Um, <laughs> this gives it a little bit of a sticky coating, which is kind of cool. Do you want to get some video of this, Rick, for your end of... Yeah, can end do. of um, can do. Tim says that would go lovely with the Baileys. <laughs> yeah, we could have a little bit of Baileys, I suppose, but... On our original one, we put uh, sesame seeds, didn't we? Yeah, oh, didn't I put you? sesame seeds. You could put you could put those. You know the little um, what are those little silver balls you get mm, for decorating they've cakes? They've got name, haven't they? Yeah. But maybe you could sprinkle a little bit of snow on it. A little bit of snow, sugar. Ice and sugar. Um, it, well, uh, well, when that's when it's cold. <laughs> I, I I wonder if um, Rick, if you've got that upstairs at all. When you if you get a moment, that your your precious old. Um, Tea strainer. tea strainer. Oh, yeah, can I have a look? Yeah, because yeah. Th that would work better for me. I can control yeah. it a little bit better. The other one we did the other day, it just came out in great big lumps. <laughs> and uh, can you see now, this is just, just Looking whilst good. it's still hot, I'm just painting on a little sugar syrup, a little simple. Sh you could actually get <laughs> a little bit of um, maple syrup and just add a tiny bit of water to it, or you could add um, some, tre you know, some, um, some treacle. But what will happen is it will just give it says enough... camcorder bandit mug. That's a blast from the past. <laughs> yes, it is a camcorder. Who said top. that? Um, cheap shop photography. Tim. Yeah, that is a blast from the past. This is Rick's old channel, the camcorder bandits. Many years ago. Glad you remember, uh -huh. not just me. Look at that. So a ASMR cooking says, bye Steve, now I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> So, what we're going to do, also, I get some, so, oh, I can't get some photographs, I've got yours, Michelle. May I borrow mine? Rick's probably got some nice he pictures. Probably, yes. uh, I'll put these up on Instagram uh, a little bit later on. I'm sure um, Rick has got some pictures as well. Oh, it's not up there. That's oh, all right. Oh, it might be in the drawer. You may want to put it in here, Rick. Let's get a picture of this one. Oh, here it is, Rick. Look, there it is. Ah, here that's all we had it. Here all the time. Nice old school um, tea strainer. 
kind of get around the front end. Oh, go use that light. Do you know what, Rick? Actually, what I might do is get it off the paper because that's not doing it any sort of um, beauty. Is it? Maybe, so, yeah. I'm going to take it off the baking paper. <laughs> Maybe. Put it on my fancy board if you want. I don't know if it'll fit on that. Fancy chopping board. There you go. It's just releasing it so the teller's stuck. Yeah. Okay. That'll photograph better, yeah? That'll work. That'll work. Get the Christmas tree in, the little Christmas tree in the background. Oh, yeah. Tree. Sorry. <laughs> yes, Tim, careful, that's what I said. There we are, see? <laughs> oh, I need a wider angle. Mm. Too, much, too much clutter in the background, yeah. but let's <laughs> work with that. Everybody just wants us to eat this, you know. I know, but it's got to cool down. It's got a lot of sugar in it. It'd be very hot. It'd be too hot at the moment, everybody. Too hot at the moment. I'm just doubling up on Rick's pictures. I'm probably making the camera all wonky, moving it. There you go, look. <laughs> so some nice pictures. Because, oh, it even looks nice there, doesn't it? Look yeah. at that. Oh, yeah. Look okay. at that. Maybe do it from that side, Rick. Go around that way, and I'll uh, just turn it round to you so everybody can see what Rick can see as he <laughs> goes into the... Yeah, into photo cool. mode, yeah, and then nice. they've got me in the background. Oh, ta -da. <laughs> hang on, there we go. Oh, hang on, I'll cut your head off. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Good shot. Oh. <laughs> oh. There you go. Um. And sorry. Oh, this is the nonsense. Oh, yeah, that's it. That blocked out the. <laughs> yeah, this I, is, I, I did, did realise it. <laughs> this is the nonsense we have to do. Everybody, this is the nonsense we have to do when we actually do cooking videos. So what I'm going to do now, oh, is it a bit early, will it, will it? How hot is it still, probably? It's still probably pretty oh, warm. That's alright, sticky, no, it'll probably be alright. Alright. So we can add to... some more after. Yeah. I'm take so that. Tim said that does look so good, you're very talented, Steve. Don't say that. Yeah. <laughs> Got a little tea strain now, and what I'm going to do is just go along the edge here. I'm not going to do the whole tree, just along the edge. See, this is much easier to, to control mm. for me. Can you see that? So just give it a little dusting. See, it looks pretty now. Of, uh, just photograph it again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <whoops. laughs> see, he's being more, more gentle this time. Yeah, I'm just going to come across just on the edges. Oh, dear, I'm sorry. I always, I'm ah. always slightly off. There we go. Just the branches, a little tannenbaum or tannenbaum. We haven't learned old tannenbaum on the, <laughs> on ukulele, have we? Rick? Otherwise, we could. Oh uh, no, we're struggling the white Christmas at that. <laughs> <laughs> we learned that one yet? Mm. Not entirely. There you go. Beautiful. I think so that's Branding enough. nothingness says looks fabulous. Um, Tanya says amazing, and Eric says yes. Told you, Uncle. Put some powdered sugar on it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, there you go. Turn, turn it around so you can see it all. Looking beautiful. <laughs> Looking gorgeous. Look at that. Look. Look at that. A little dusting. There you go. I'm doing a little bit of David. Is it David Bailey? Is that the yeah. famous um, photographer? Yeah. Uh, there you go. It's David. <laughs> Got lovely hair, Rick. You've got lovely hair today. Why? Well, yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, it's right. being cut off tomorrow. Joe 90. <laughs> For those who don't get the reference. Do you want to reference? Those? Are you crouching with it? How about, how about one like this? You don't want it to slide off. Uh, right, it's got a portrait. Um, and we go like this. F. A little bit high, a little bit low, a little bit, little bit okay. slow. Ready? Yeah. Good one, actually. Beautiful. Oh yeah, work it, baby. Oh, work, work, it, work it, work it, work it. Kiss the Nutella, kiss the Christmas tree. <laughs> oh, hang on. <laughs> Can you get the fan on? Michelle, let's get a fan from upstairs. The backlight runs right through my hair. <laughs> right, do, do a smile or whatever. So Ready? Mr. Old Clunker says, Three, making one. it in and look at there what looks like the end result. Hope everyone is doing well. <sighs> Here you go, everybody. Help yourself. To a delicious. Wow. <sighs> See, now it's a tear and share, so you tear. It seems almost a shame to actually <laughs> to start we, it. We're not going to have any, everybody. We're going to finish here. We're not going to have any. <laughs> so sorry. 
See you next time. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> Push this man uh, away. Did, did I um? Mm. I put the. Whoops! No. Yeah. No. No. Wider. All right, Michelle. Let's come round. Is it random noises? Oh no! Oh, it's yes. too pretty. <laughs> it is going to be. Do we want a little bit of uh, what? brown nectar to go? Well, not really. I'm, I'm good, but if you want to go for something... I'm I might have. Rick, Rick's definitely watching the thing, but unless he wants some, I'm going to have a little bit of egg. Oh, of, of, um, a little bit of a... Uh, the stuff we made? Yes. That, yeah, some in the fridge. So I'm going to have a little bit of homemade oh, Bailey's. I... Just a I knew food. he'd have some. Do you want some, Michelle? Do you want to try? No, it? I did last time. It's the chocolate. Shake your 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 chocolate. When you make homemade Baileys, they, they do separate out. If you want Baileys that doesn't separate out, you have to buy it from the shop and then it's got all the chemicals in there to stop it, to keep it emulsified. But, you know, what's a little shake before Christmas? A little shake. Little shake, little shake. And then, we're going to pour ourselves a decent um, little splodge of Bailey's. We should, go, we should go so well with this. Cheers, me dears. Cheers, me dears. Cheers. Cheers. Homemade. Ching, ching. ching, ching. Sorry, Michelle. That's yeah. all right. I like a bottle of water. <laughs> Do you want a coffee? No, no. That's no, too late for coffee. Too late for coffee. Mm. We're going to break this bread. Mm. <laughs> okay, here we come. In here, nice oh, and close. Awesome. Uh, no, let's go back a little bit. <laughs> that was a bit that too close. Nice. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Um, ladies first, Michelle, you take a piece off. Am I taking the, it from the, from the back end? Yeah. Give it a good old stretchy goo goo goo. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yes, look at that. Yeah. Oh, don't leave any behind. <laughs> yeah. Rick? Yes, please. You've been so patient yeah. waiting. Get yourself a piece. Mm. Let's do Still it. Warm. Get it right in the, near the edge there, yeah. Should be cooked all the way through. Is it cooked all the way through? Is it cooked yep, all the way through? Yeah, I've eaten half mine. <laughs> I'm coming on this, I'm coming on this end as well. Mm. Mm. Smells good. Mm. <laughs> so you've got to be little like me and then you fit in your screen. Caramelised on the top. Delicious. Mm. Yum, yum. I wonder what he's going to say. I've got to go back because there's comments. Okay. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. A little bit of homemade bays. <laughs> oh, it's still warm, so it's sticking to the roof of my mouth. Mm. Mm. You should. Jo, jo says, This is the moment I get jealous. Mm. Random nothing. We said cheers. Joe says cheers. Cheers, everybody. Time to make more Baileys. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, you want mm. a bit more, right? Mm. <laughs> Ran um. Random nothing that says, how long oh. would this last after cooking? <laughs> <laughs> half an hour about if these guys are around. Half an hour, yeah. I usually put about a 30 minute shelf life on this. <laughs> oh. No, it will last a few days. You know, it's like it's bread, it's fresh bread. So it's, yeah. you know. You're it's... probably going to last two or three days before it starts to. Um, but I must say, we've never made one and had it last longer than a day. Mm. <laughs> That's so nice. Just look forward to moving away at that through, through the evening. So Keith okay. says, well, it looks good. What's your favourite Christmas food? Uh, my favourite Christmas food is Christmas pudding and ham, crumbly, crumbly ham. Mince pies. Mince pies are, are, are right up there with Christmas pudding, but I think Christmas pudding for me is one of my favourite uh, all-time dishes. Now Gordon says, ask Rick if he's taking the Hobbit. Christmas dinner, the whole thing. The whole thing, yeah. The whole, the whole thing, thing. The complete. Uh, you're right. The yeah, complete. the full works, once a year, just... No. Sorry. No, it's all right, no, I interrupted there. So Gordon said, ask Rick if he's taking the Hobbit to Isengard? Isengard. He's yeah. taking the Hobbit to Isengard. Oh, yes, that was a... Yes. Video I did oh, okay. a million years ago. <laughs> is, that, is, that, is, that, is that Gordon? That's that Gordon. Mm -hmm. bl block Gordon, put him in the <laughs> naughty, put him in the naughty seat. Mm. So um, Tim says so... I was going to say I can't see it lasting two days. No, 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 <laughs> no that's going to last around as yeah. about the same length of time as that pizza did. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you want to check out the the, the full playlist of, Chris, of Christmas recipes, there is a live stream. Link down below. You can make yourself some homemade Baileys. There's lots more to come between now and Christmas. 
Um, we've got possibly not the next, but the next, but one will be doggy treats. Christmas doggy treats, maybe even cat doggy treats. We're not, not. Uh, cat doggy treats? We haven't fleshed that episode out. <laughs> um, Eric says, has everyone hit the thumbs up yet? Do it now. Hit subscribe. that thumbs up before you, uh, you go any further. Subscribe to the channel. Um, do you want to do any more questions? or we? we... Well, there's, I don't think it's any questions that I haven't answered. Put them in now or I won't be asking them. Speak now. <laughs> ever hold Speak peace. Yes. yes. Ever hold your peace. <laughs> This is why well, when I say it, does it sound just a little bit sordid, Rick? <laughs> I didn't want to say anything. This has improved. You know, you know when you have a curry and you put it in the fridge and it's it tastes even better the next day. Yeah, this is the same. Like YouTubers, it improves with age. Mm, it's not always the case. <laughs> <laughs> but this, this, oh my goodness, this, I'm have another this homemade piece. baby. I've cut, I've cut off a piece here. Look. Yeah. Gordon says, great live stream, guys. Eric said, so what's next? Mm. We haven't decided, Eric, but it says it's going to be something and mm. soon. <laughs> there may be food involved. There may be food mm. involved. Mm. That's so good. It's so half delicious. Gone, mm. We've eaten half the bounds, bounds already. <laughs> I'm going to have this little bit here. That's just, a little bit more. It's just, <laughs> just hanging off. That was, that was part of my piece. Mm. <laughs> so, thank you for joining us. We're going to say goodbye now. I hope you've learned something, or if you haven't, you haven't asked the question. <laughs> You'll have to save it till next time. Um, from, can you come around, Michelle? From Rick, myself, and the lovely Michelle. And me. <laughs> Love to you all. Merry Christmas, as always. And we will see you again in another video. Coming soon. Coming shortly. <laughs> Don't forget, subscribe to Rick as well. Yeah. Joe. You there, Damon? Anyone else have I missed? <laughs> Come on, yeah. Love George. See you next time. Hello. Oh. Come on. <laughs> Oops. Hey, hey. Oh.